What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Collector Beard Reactions. This go around, we got Carl Pilkington's Diary, Part 2. I'm going to do this. All right. I said before, somebody needs to take this. It, I think probably any part of anything with Carl Pilkington in it and make it a do not laugh challenge. So I'm challenging other American Reacts reactors to uh, react to the same video and see how long you can last before you laugh. So, yeah. Link will be in the description for the video. I'm interested to see how long y'all can last. I'm not sure I'm going to take and do all that well on this one. Uh, just because I find him, an abs he's absolutely hysterical. Just, there's no two ways about it. Carl Pilkington, absolutely hysterical. You take and throw in Ricky Gervais's laugh with it and uh, Merchant's uh, quips. And yeah. So, before we go any further, like, subscribe, notification bell. Let's go ahead and get into it. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And then what, they'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they? You, like, I'll tell you just... what, though, right? That I'm getting worried now because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean, though? Like a proper paranoid sort of it, one of those people that soon going to live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the. You know, and yeah. Suzanne's having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, of think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said, yeah. that they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a the lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone. Right, and they say now these germs love chocolate. And stuff. Did this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, he said, Ted, you went what? <laughs> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ. I came, it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> well, that's All brilliant. Right, that. I'm out. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one to you back. It's again. <laughs> so in the future, you're running around, and germs are eating chocolate. <laughs> Valid point from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Leave it next to the fat scientist. In the laboratory with a fat scientist. Oh, hell. I'm sorry. I just... Just the way they bring stuff across for me sometimes is too funny. Let's see how much, long, if, how much longer than a minute and 50 y'all can last. <laughs> <laughs> that's not science. That's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that time again. It's Carl's diary. Oh, what's he written today? I ain't even make it to Carl, uh, Carl's diary. Oh, God. Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so you, firstly, how did you know she was a mind reading woman? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Mind reading woman comes in, so he thinks about the dog to confuse her. You'd have to think in dog. Like, what the hell, cuz? About her dog. That's amazing. So, so he, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind-reading and stuff. So right. you get a, a recording, a recording of, the, of it. Uh, yeah. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. 
and the dog was sort of looking worried, and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was, were they looking... I'm not being funny. Were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you think? No, they were just, just looking at me, and I was sort of <laughs> panicking a bit. And the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind, so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> not just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you know what she's going to do. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, yo. Oh, this motherfucker is a fool. This motherfucker is a fool. Oh, no, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. <laughs> I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, oh! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw... Don't think it would be a problem if it's been like that from an early age. Uh, <laughs> you'd have to be like that from an early age. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, Carl. Saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk? How would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk? So you're basically walking forwards. I reckon or, I'd walk would... sideways, so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> <laughs> oh God! He solved it again. He's thought it through. <laughs> Got home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news. That that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look all right if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people. <laughs> what comic book has he been reading? Oh, my God. What the hell? Good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders... Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> Good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, cockroach I mean, men, spider men. What are you talking about? Look at some insects. Right, yeah. they don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives <laughs> like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff? Powers going about. So these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men, or or whatever. That's no, what you mean. said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could the use where's them. The, you've left a big bit out? But when that <laughs> one inch cockroach becomes a six foot bloke <laughs> with wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. <laughs> Woke up at nine fifty five a.m. As soon as I woke up, I looked at Sue. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, hell. Woke up at 9.55 a.m. As soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I was thinking that. Swinging into action. He zips up his eyes alone. <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up. I'll put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ, yo. Oh my god, oh my god. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Wake up and tell me that I tell you about the immune system like he's a fucking advertisement or something. Oh Jesus. <laughs> the first thing he'd be like, you wanna fuck? <laughs> Just saying. Oh fucking hell. <laughs> Oh, chimpanzee, that was running down again. <laughs>
extracts from his famous diary. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock and they're trying to hide under it. Carl, you're a maniac! just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? Oh, I'm going to have a headache. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, no! Why doesn't that work like Because there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, okay, read on. I've heard that a lot of people go camping in Australia, which I think's mental. If I was to fly all that way, I'd want a decent bed. Mm. Plus, I wouldn't be camping in a place where there are killer spiders wandering around. I agree. I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was all a bit of a nightmare, because I was going with my mate, and uh, he said he knew someone who knew knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, who had a bit of land in the garden? What's the point, though, innit? You know, what's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of, like, a spa down the road and, like, a <laughs> No, because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. <laughs> no, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have getting for like, when they have parties it, yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land... Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. So now you're stuck in the middle of a big civilised conurbation <laughs> called Lyme Regis. Well, how are you going to survive? Well, we ended up just sort of keeping on the beach. But uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. So we oh, thought, nice. that's the place to go. Oh, yeah. I love no, it. Well, municipal that... tip. What was it? Was it, was it chemical waste or just like, you know, <laughs> just, um, just syringes just and uh, But listen, though, you've got to think about that. Rusty. If there's, so rusty. If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like, it's a way, that's like a little tip of... So you um, could have slept in a thing, public lavatory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one's nice. What is covered in shit? It means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five-star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed up and threw their lungs out. <laughs> so that's, that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there. And their dismissiveness of his uh, reasoning... Uh, <laughs> and their correlations are horrible, but funny when when you put it to uh, animation. So that's that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there, and then Some what was annoying is he puts down the tent. We uh, we what's the name? We uh, it was already up. It, it was already it all, the way, it all the way there. They let's pack it down. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was, as soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, that's with the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday makers, they uh, uh, they started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah, near, near the nappies. And um, they offered us some sausages. All right. My mates said, "Oh, ignore them. That's like code for uh, swingers." What? No. <laughs> what? So there were some people cooking some sausages. <laughs> yeah. Saying, "Would you like a sausages? We've made too much." And you it's said, "No, that's thing. code don't for swinging." Don't talk to strangers. It's like we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone. You know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And so, uh, so know but, it. but what do these people look like? <laughs> uh, they were about 45. Who are they, that? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So what was in it for the bloke? <laughs> uh, some people like that, don't they? <laughs> no, you, you, you right, I want the bald one, love. <laughs> uh, if it's like wife swapping, should, well, should one of you be a wife? <laughs> no, but I don't, I don't know all the rules and that, but... Uh, He's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of I said, don't believe sausages is a code, a code for swingers. Because <laughs> eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, well, get your pants off, and they go, well, we just have some sausages. They go, oh, this isn't working, this code. But why, <laughs> would, <laughs> we code? why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. 
Makes you wonder. We don't. Let's not trust these people. Let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. September thirtieth, going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh, yeah. I bought a fan to put in our room to drown out the sound of the mopeds. I've heard Wayne Rooney does the same thing with a vacuum cleaner. What? If you've just got a noise, um, that's constant. It makes you nod off. And it drowns out every other background noise. So all you've got is, like, if it's a vac, it's just... And if that's constant for, like, all night, <laughs> you just nod People off. next door going, they've got their vacuum cleaner on again. Poke, poke the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that's how nuclear war starts. <laughs> yeah. It works. Poke the chicken. Doesn't work. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <sighs> We ear plugs, watched... earplugs, drown out everything. I tried them. I didn't like it, did I? Why not? Because I could hear my heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a strange little creature. Oh. Didn't do much this morning. Just sat by the pool, saving insects that flew into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die like fucking Noah. That's right. You see nothing good. How were you like, saving them? Did you wait for them to hit the water, then fish them out, or grab oh, them in the air? Stuck my finger on the top. They grabbed on, <laughs> lifted it off. And what? When it, like a, some sort of insect lifeguard, you'd see someone landing. They go right. That's me. Da, 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 and you'd go in there. But it's hard to turn a sort of a blind eye to stuff like that because you know that's something. You know, you're witnessing death. And if you can save something, you do, don't you? You do your bit. And at night, I'd sort of think. Have they learnt the lesson, or will they be back? I've done my bit. I can't do more than that. I'm on holiday. Do your bit. I'm lucky enough. To... <laughs> Have they learned a the lesson, or will they be back in their dead tomorrow? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, insects might be the only thing. Would <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Do your bit. I love it. I did my bit. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he was running around saving flies and things. It's just something... There's something so sort of... Beatle. <laughs> an old lady drowned. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> saving a beetle. <laughs> oh! Chimpanzee, that is raining down! Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's Diary. Uh, here we are. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glenn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall. Was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat. So I think the people who had it before us, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what have you been doing with that mirror and that? But <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> No, just, you so, know... Just, what? What? What has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's just doing, bit, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental and aren't they? And I don't know, what do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't do anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? No, I don't. Experimental what do you mean? What, what do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff... What? what? Whatever they do. Chemistry, what? they have a chemistry set out, they'd be doing experiments. What? <laughs> no, just doing what? <laughs> Singing I am what I am and just checking out their... No, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing... Uh, which Carl, you're not on the phone as well. Yeah? You're not no, I'm not. I'm, I'm well, not. This is what. Why? Well, but what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> why are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your? I'm not. I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what. Why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there. Right? But forget <laughs> the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was I tried. I was going to take it down. And I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. You know, it could crack and because it's the size it. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, t it took up a whole wall, right. right? So like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But 
He's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought, I can't take that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right, you, you wouldn't know and what have you, but it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Because I've put a nail in it. And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Specifics? No, so, I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah, I understand that, but don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why is someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. What do you think of Dali? Going melting clocks and stuff. No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. <laughs> Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, yeah. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating. That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters. And uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And uh, that's Andy. I don't know the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of started saying, "Oh, you and your clocks and all that." Right. Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed it, on the it phone. off his mate's head. Went on the phone and they both looked at each other like, Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> and they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. <laughs> Things like that annoy me. <clears> because it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. <laughs> art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. Well, know? Suzanne like, likes some art. Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three, three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> my man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, oh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But... Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was OK while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why, why, it's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of... Special treatment, and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me. special treatment? <laughs> sometimes we put food down for it, and sometimes it gets uh, 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 on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what? just stroke it. We're you not massage sending it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no it's good. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it... I can't believe <laughs> it. Because it, every time I go around there, it comes straight from the ghoulies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there, you've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one is a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it, for, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've but, done this one. Do you, know, do you know what gets me wrong, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, because he's just sat there. Like, and the, it was thinking exactly the same <laughs> fucking thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. It's, it's, it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. Get rid of the lizard, <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That science gone mad, innit? 
I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? What? <laughs> why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why... Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is, why? at what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's because... It's because, it's because <coughs> <laughs> On a scale of one to can't with some of his stuff, you just can't. Just, just, oh my god. <coughs> Young age. <laughs> Well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, because, it's just pauses for causes, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There that's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. <laughs> well, going a bit mad there, isn't it? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was... And there's the birth. There's a conception. Oh, Lordy. I think they have websites for stuff like that happy with it i was like oh god you know what I mean? it was an odd looking thing i couldn't say oh it looks like you because that would be a diss <laughs> oh chimpanzee that is only gonna bring it down for the that's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the conga? Right, one is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the conga. They come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> 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 Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said, one more than one. He understood. When we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. <laughs> there is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he does. <laughs> a hell of a phone yeah, call unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. <laughs> I wonder at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. What do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders... Like wouldn't wouldn't be good, but but they sort of do they do something. There's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not not everything though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no, it's it's ninety seven percent water or something. Yeah. So how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> that's, that's more useful. Give him another 3% and make him water. Oh, God. Oh Went God. into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. I agree. Well, what's the... Who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little... Electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One, 
is living underground. <laughs> Do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement, or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him, and he said it's all. It had been raining really heavily, and that, and it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here. What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, "Oh, come, come down to us," <laughs> and he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, underground? He, he, he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't shock me. That's to that's He's spent to far too long with him if that now you're just happy. <laughs> Is the guy from Yorkshire just asking for a friend? You know, Monty Python and all that. No, wait, that'd be a hole in the road or a cardboard box, like, on the side. Yeah. You do accept. I totally accept that. <clears throat> I, I'd be surprised if I walked round where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. Mm. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So a, a man living in a hole is not <laughs> unusual. Isn't that bizarre? Right, carry on. Watch the film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Ask Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, What's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. Do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitle film and go, right, everybody, let's all do the Congo. <laughs> We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work, and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are bees. They love a drink. Um, and uh, they can... Wait. You get drunk bees? So, alcoholic bees. But they're supposed to be m making the honey so you can make the mead so you can get drunk. Are these fucking bastards, I swear. They can just... They, they will uh, drink pure... Alcohol. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? But some bees get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bounces. Yeah, they sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good idea. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face. But I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh, let's move away, yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told... Don't drink and fly, folks. Don't drink and fly. ...that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this, is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly, OK? It's not that no one's ever told them they can't and as soon as someone tells me not meant to fly they all fall out of the sky going oh what are we doing like in a cartoon <laughs> no but it's, it's something about the confidence and that at the moment nobody's saying no, it's nothing to do them. with the confidence there is no such thing as confidence in bees a bee never loses his nerve that's not why it drinks because what are you drinking for i'm just not confident anymore there's no one turned to the bottle i can't go up there again you're an idiot Oh, chimpanzee's that. He's gone and written it down again. <laughs> That's the uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Walk through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. 
that's so true. That's really true. If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the what 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 happened to the cat then? It 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 gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye, and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh and no! It was just walking around, bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, "Oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that," but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune. They shouldn't tell you. But. Mum and dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can have, have its eyes sorted out. But it... W <laughs> I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. <laughs> it's just that we get through them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you're not going to have kids. They have good lives, it's just we go through them. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god almighty. I can't believe it. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit. He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit. The That's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back, but you couldn't see him. <laughs> Sounds like he's suffering from vampirism. <laughs> Is this motherfucker Nosferatu or some shit? Right, he wasn't in the picture. <clears throat> he was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way this is scientifically possible. What's what? his want? Yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. <laughs> Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. <laughs> I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them. Unless you're blind. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? Just because most stuff is, is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they've found someone, they're happy with them. Stick with them. But no, it's not true. I think most things are based on... I think, if I'm not mistaken, blind people get a mental picture of how people look by feeling on their face. Maybe the affairs happen because they, you know, start at the face and just work their way down. I don't know. And looks. What I mean is, <coughs> you first, first, like, meet someone in that. Well, initially, it's only looks because yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so... a, but that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's like facts or anything. I'm just thinking if you're blind. Why mess about? You're still basing on it if it's only looks that yeah. you people find... What? Yeah, I'm just saying, so why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. I, I just... All right, I mean, maybe that's not... I, I mean more like... Do you want me to cross it out? Shall I cross it out? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just the same way I think I put how, you know, people... Uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman... Uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're going to have a change, have a change. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but, <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject. I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said bit by bit. Be a good mirror, I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. And if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. <coughs> I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that 
around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea? Got up early, it's Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, a present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice. Quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once in your company. <laughs> they always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a T-shirt with her face on. <laughs> <laughs> There we have it, the Ricky Gervais Show, Carl Pilkington's Diary Report 2. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. All right, like I said, I, I, I'm putting the challenge out there for other American reacts, reactors. Uh, try not to laugh challenge on this one. I failed miserably. A minute and 50 seconds in, I'm out. Just because, I, I don't know. I think this wasn't, I, I, I chose this and made it a bit unfair for myself just for how funny this stuff is. So that being said, y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.